We are now live. Welcome to week seven, day one. And we will continue our discussion of linked lists. E4 is still going to be due on Wednesday. Um, it's not honestly that hard an assignment. The hard thing is getting the linked list to work. And the hard thing about getting a linked list to work is that if you screw up any part of it, then the thing breaks. Okay. And so the nice thing about EU4 is uh, CD EU4 dot reference is that uh, make, uh, make clean make uh, is that you, there's a tester right tester linked list node class. And so the thing comes with a, a fairly decent uh, tester that will test your um, test your class for you, right? So there's a node class, and it'll test that. And there's a list class, and we'll test that. And if you do that, then you're probably pretty good. And then you just have to build kind of the game logic for EU4, which is to simulate an AI, um, trying to decide who it should invade. It's not exactly um, Europa Universe House 4. It's, uh, just sort of themed that way. So let's go ahead and add like 10,000 soldiers and we're going to add provinces to invade. Um, ignore the sound of goblins in the background. Uh, add a province to invade, Paris, which will take, I don't know, 100 people to invade, and uh, uh, London should take 2,000 people to invade and a high priority that'll add it to the front of the queue. Uh, that one will be, um, I don't know, Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C., 10,000 people to invade. Yeah, and then no, if we print all bird. the provinces... Yeah, you got a pet bird at your house. I have a pet bird. <laughs> nice. So you can see that um, when you add a province, they just go at the end of the list. If you do a high priority, they go at the beginning of the list. So this is going to be calling the push front... Uh, push back, pop front, pop back kinds of things that you should be able to do. Um, the example code I've been giving you isn't exactly what you have to do for this assignment. You, so you have to learn the concepts and learn the code and kind of adapt it for this, uh, which is one of the core skills of a computer science major is uh, looking at existing code, understanding conceptually and adapting it to your needs. If you can do that, you can be a professional programmer. So uh, let's add one more high priority province that will go, uh, go again at the top of the list and this will be um, uh, uh, Berlin take uh, so 2,000 people to invade and so if we print all these provinces then we got this and then if we invade invade provinces then uh, it will pick the first province that we have enough soldiers for so Berlin costs 2,000 soldiers to invade we had 10,000 before so now we have 8,000 soldiers remaining. If we invade again, then it skips over Washington, D.C. because we don't have enough soldiers for it. And it invades Paris, which takes 100 soldiers to invade, like in real life. And I kid, I kid. And then we can invade again and uh, take out London. And if we try invading it with nothing that we can delete, we don't have enough soldiers to take Washington, D.C., then it says nothing deleted. Okay. If we print the provinces remaining, there is just Washington remaining. And so for annex, it's the same thing, except you annex everybody that you can at once. So uh, let's give ourselves 10,000 diplomacy points, which is not, again, how this game works in, in reality, but um, add a province to annex is six. And so let's say Alsace, which will take a thousand diplomacy points to annex. A, uh, another province, Lorraine, 2,000 points to annex, and a high priority, which will come at the beginning of the list. Uh, we'll call this one Paris, but people don't want to give up Paris. That's going to be uh, 10,001 diplomacy points. And we'll do another high priority, which will be um, um, what's up, girl? Are you teleporting? Um, burn. Okay, it is 1207, girl, and that'll be 3,000 Okay, so if we print all the provinces, you can see that Bird came in at the top, and then we got Paris, Alsace, Lorraine. We got 10,000 diplomacy points, so when we uh, annex uh, provinces, it will do all of the ones you can. When you invade, it does one province. We do the annexing, it does all the provinces that you can afford. So with 10,000 points, we were able to get Bern and Alsace and Lorraine 
and that was 6,000 points. We have 4,000 remaining. And Paris, we didn't have enough points for, so it skipped over. And so that is what you need to do for the game logic side of things. And so basically, this, this is a common kind of thing where you have a list of things and you've got a criteria, like we've got 10,000 points, what can we buy? You just, for annexing, you just go through the list and everything, you have something you can buy, you buy it, and you reduce the number of points you have, and yeah, that's too expensive, skip, skip, skip. Oh, that one we can buy, you buy it, lower the number of points you have, you keep going until you get the end of the list. So, um, overall, not, uh, not bad as far as the game logic goes. The, uh, the hardest thing when doing um, linked list is, of course, deleting. And so this is uh, our final bit of code that you need to know. Uh, insert after, um, it's like we did find the diamond emoji still in there. Uh, so find will look for something in a linked list. Insert after looks for something and then inserts after it. So now we're going to do the hardest thing in linked list, which is deleting. Usually when doing uh, data structures, the hardest thing is actually deleting from the linked list. Uh, adding, adding things to a linked list um, is easy. Deleting things from a linked list is usually the hardest thing. And so if you guys can't figure out deleting, <clears throat> if you guys can't figure out deleting, you can do what's called a lazy deletion. You can do a lazy deletion and uh, uh, under your list, uh, under your node class here, you can say boolean deleted. At have I been deleted? Uh, by default, no. But uh, you, for the delete for the delete function, you could just um, set deleted to be true, and then uh, just skip it anytime you do any operation. Find won't return true if there's a deleted node in there and things like that. So uh, if I, I don't recommend this, I recommend learning the real way. But if you really get stuck, uh, <laughs> you do a lazy deletion, just leak memory essentially. Um, it, but there are there are some data structures where you actually do do a uh, lazy deletion like this, where um, you'll just mark something as deleted, and the next time you insert something, if you find a deleted node, you just overwrite it, and so that way you don't have to do another allocate. So it's it's fairly common if you're doing a lot of deletes and a lot of inserts back to back, um, you can just do a lazy delete, and then rather than having to call new again, um, you can just change the data. You know, you deleted Paris, you put in Berlin. Okay, that might, might, might be a little too on the nose. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Uh, you delete Paris, you put in Antwerp. Uh, then then you just mark Paris as deleted to be true, and then when you insert, and you're like, oh, yeah, change Paris to be Antwerp, and then uh, it, it depends on the needs of the data structure, but that prevents you from having to do a, re a delete and a reallocation and things like that. Uh, so it's sometimes faster. Okay, so... Um, isn't that how a hard drive space is freed? It's marked to be overwritten. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's 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 used th this this lazy deletion policy Whoa, is is used in, is in a lot of contexts. Uh, the uh, if hash tables oftentimes use lazy deletion. It, it just depends. Are you going to go over delete amount a little? Um, yeah. So like um, you're you're going to repeatedly delete, right? So if you have to if you there's there's one delete where you just go through the list, you find the first person you can afford to delete, you delete it. And, and then there's one where you're given a budget and you go through and you delete everything until you hit that budget. And so for that one, you're just gonna, once we do this delete function, which we're doing right now, uh, then for delete amount, you're just gonna repeatedly call delete until, until you hit the end of the list. Okay. So this will be an order n delete. And... Uh, what time is it? It is now 12.11. You should probably log off now, girl. Get ready for school. Get your thing over there. Okay. Uh, so, how do we want to delete this stuff? Uh, I feel like I the ice cream power doesn't really do much. So, for your thing, you have a int, uh, you know, cost, right? And so what you're going to do is, for the delete function, you guys are going to do a delete where you take in void delete amount int cost, right? And so for that one, you're just going to start at the head, go to the tail, and the first time you find a a node that has a cost below the cost passed in, then you delete it. Okay, but for this linked list here, it's based on names, 
So we don't have the cost. Instead, what we're going to do is just call delete. And we're going to just search for a key. And so we're just going to delete, you know, like uh, you could delete Lester out of, the, out of the thing. And you can't call it delete, by the way. Uh, delete is a reserved keyword. Can't call it map. So uh, we're going to call delete by name. Delete's a reserved keyword. Okay. Some, some words like friend, you can't make a variable called friend. Uh, so some people are occasionally um, tripped up by reserved keywords in C++. Uh, there's a good a good number of reserved keywords. Um, you'll you'll if you if you do type one, you'll see that then will highlight it in yellow. So don't don't make a variable named friend. Can't have friends in C++. <laughs> okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So for this one, I'm also going to do this bad thing here. And I'm just going to uh, search. So uh, if so, if we say delete Lester, and Lester is not actually in the um, if Lester is not actually in the list, then we're just going to return. So that's uh, so once we get past this point, we know that the key exists. Uh, it's doing an extra bit of work. I, if I was doing this in reality, I wouldn't do it this way. But what's nice is that we are now guaranteed the key is in the Data structure, right? So that that simplifies our logic. Okay. So it's, it's an extra extra order in work that we shouldn't be doing, but it, it's simple. So we know it's in there. So now we're going to do a for loop. So for node pointer current equals head. So starting at the head of the linked list, as long as current is not null, current equals current points to next. So this is our standard pattern for going through a linked list. Like if we wanted to print an entire linked list, we would see out current points to data, right? And so this code here, this code here, these three lines of code here will print the linked list, right? So this, this pattern um, is very, very common in computer science. Starting at the head, going to the end, one element at a time, uh, once once it goes off the end of the linked list, uh, it will terminate because cur becomes false because null a null pointer is zero zero is false. Um, let's actually look at your um, let's look at your quiz results. So I'm kind of curious how you guys did on that. I watched some of the results as they were coming in, but I didn't look at the final uh, thing on it. So so a lot of people turned in their competency exams at the last minute. I've graded all the ones through the weekend, but 22 came in at the last minute. So I will grade those as soon as I can and put up the next take as soon as I can. So week five, day two, week six, day two. Okay. And so uh, let's look at the... It's covered up by the video screen. There we go. All right. So uh, we had very few people get all these right. And this is very common, so don't don't beat yourself up over this. Linked lists are hard to understand, and uh, that's this is kind of what I was expecting. So um, learning to translate between English and linked list code and linked list code in English is uh, like I said, you should expect for your brain to melt and come out of your ears when doing it. So what this code here is doing for node current equals head current current equals current points to next. This looks like it's deleting the entire linked list, starting at the top, going to the bottom deleting the element, but it's wrong. This is bad code. And the reason why it's bad is because you are deleting the current node and then using the pointer. You are using the pointer after deleting it. Okay. So after current has been deleted, you cannot dereference it. Okay. And so uh, you, that's why in our destructor, we, we created a temporary pointer to the next. We deleted the current pointer and then set it, set the uh, current pointer to be the, the temporary. So if you if you remember our uh, destructor over here, remember this. So the reason why we don't um, the reason why we make a copy of it, right? We copy uh, the pointer. We move um, we move the cursor to the next, and then delete the copy. Is so that we're not doing a use after free. 
Okay, if you can't use a pointer after you've deleted it. And so, uh, most of you guys did what looks like it's doing. It looks like this this thing is going to go through and delete li the linked list. It's a very simple destructor, right? And it's wrong. It's for every for every question, there is an answer that is simple, elegant, and wrong. And this is one of them. So, uh, it is not dereferencing a null pointer. A lot of people think that when you delete a cur when you delete a pointer, it becomes null. It does not. It absolutely 100% does not become null if you delete it. Once you delete a pointer, you cannot use it anymore. It doesn't get set to null. It doesn't change. It's still pointing at the same memory address, but you cannot use it anymore. And so this is a use after free bug. Uh, good. Nobody thought it was printing all the values in the linked list. I sometimes put really dumb answers in there just to see if people are just kind of like clicking on them because they have no clue. But that's good. Now, most of you guys got what it was looking, what it looked like it was doing. Okay, in plain English, what is this code doing? Cur is pointed to somewhere in the middle of the linked list. I, I said in the middle of the linked list, so you don't have to worry about um, deleting the head, deleting the tail, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, any of the edge cases. It's just you're, you're in the middle of a linked list somewhere. Okay, doubly linked list, obviously. So we are making a new, a new node. Um, the new guys next is us. The new guys previous is our previous. And then we've got this thing, which probably caused some of your heads to explode. Um, so let me pull up one note, and let's let's let me. I'm going to split screen this so that you can. Um, I, I'm going to draw one line at a time. Is that February tenth. I'm going to draw. I'm going to go through that code one step at a time and and draw. Pictorially, what is happening here in this 20 second right? okay. I'm going to draw pictorially what is happening. So let's snap this to the left side of the screen. And can I hide you? Yes, good. And I'll snap you to the right side of the screen. And there we go. Okay, so, uh, so first line of code here node pointer temp equals new node data. That is going to allocate a nice new chunk of memory with a next pointer and a previous pointer, and let's say we're storing a, um, I don't know, a name or something. Uh, 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 oh yeah, it's the data. And then uh, by default, uh, our constructor is gonna set this to null and this to null. Now, that's where we are after line one of the code. We've just allocated a chunk of memory, We've got a pointer called temp. Remember, pointers are just integers. Under the scenes, they're just integers. And so when the when the new, new is part of the memory subsystem, when it allocates memory, it's going to come off the, the heap somewhere, and it's going to return a number like 855, five, eh, you know, whatever. It's got some number. And so all a pointer is is just that number. Whatever, whatever memory address, the start of the the start of that uh, chunk of memory is, that gets put into temp. So temp is just holding some number, right? Um, it, and, and it's important to think of these things this way. There's there's nothing magical about them. They're, they're really just integers, and you can add numbers to them and stuff. So um, temp is holding whatever block in memory this starts at, what what, ad, what address in memory this block starts at. Okay, and then we, we've got some linked list over here. We got like a couple guys in the linked list. And so cur is where we're currently at right here. And currently, We've got a linked list. This is going back that way. It's going to look like this currently. And so this is node A, and I'll have like a node B, this one node C, so they don't have to come up with clever names for them. And and this guy continues on that way, and there's somebody coming in. This way. We're, we're just in the middle of a big, big linked list. Okay. So we just allocated this chunk of memory. We're now going to execute this line of code here, temp next equals curve. So temp points to next equals cur. So next points to cur, like that. Okay, that's it. Remember, cur is a pointer. Pointers are an integer. So we set whatever integer we're holding here to be the memory address of cur. Okay. So um, okay. So that's this line of code here that we did. Now we're going to say temp points to previous equals current points of previous. So current points of previous has the memory address of this guy. So 
our guy now holds the memory address of that guy as well. So this memory address, we draw it as an arrow, but it's really just an integer. We just hold the memory address of A now. Okay, so after these two lines of code have, written, have run, then uh, we've got these pointers on temp set up. And then we're gonna say temp points to previous points to next, temp points to previous points to next is gonna be set to temp and temp next points to previous equals temp as well. So temps previous is this guy, okay? Temps previous is next, which is this pointer right here. Temps, temp points to previous, A, in other words, A's next now points to temp. And then temp's next, which is B, B's previous is set to be temp. A point, uh, temp points to next, right? Temp points to next is pointing at B, so that's just B. So B's previous is pointing at temp. And so what we've done is we have inserted this linked list prior to uh, B and after A. And if you look at the arrows, everything's hooked up properly. His B's previous is Muya, Muya's previous is A, A's next is Muya, Muya's next is B. If you forget any of these lines, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, and horrible, horrible things will happen. Okay. So uh, it's a really good habit to get into, and then size plus plus, of course, to maintain the invariant. It's a really good habit to get into to sketch things out. Um, and, and you have to have, um, we draw arrows for these things, but really it's just a number. It's, you know, B's memory address might be 8,000 and A's memory address might be 7,000. And so this guy is literally just an integer holding 7,000 and this is an integer holding 8,000. <coughs> That's all it is behind the scenes. They're just integers. Okay. 32 bit integers on 32 bit systems, 64 bit integers on 64 bit systems. So, usually. Uh, so it's buggy because the pointers are being set right. Nope, pointers are being set right. It's inserting a new node in the list before cur. That's what it's doing. It's buggy because it's dereferencing an old pointer. Nope. And it is inserting a new node in the list after cur. Nope. You got it. You got to sketch it out. You got to see what's coming before Muya there. Okay. So uh, yeah, don't feel bad about uh, doing poorly on the quiz. Um, that's why they're there. Uh, when you get something wrong, you know, as, as they say, death is the best teacher. It'll, it'll identify what you need to work on. The only way that you can really fail this class is if you give up, right? If you, if you actually work hard and um, go through, go through the Zybooks, because the Zybooks goes through the theory of linked lists also. I do too, but it's just one of those concepts you need to just work on until it, clicks and then you're like oh these are actually really easy <laughs> it's it's like a night and day difference it, like when you start off it's just frustrating and nothing works and it's like <laughs> you know and then after you understand it, it's like oh yeah okay it's really easy and um in some programming languages they use linked lists instead of for loops um in lisp lisp is the list processing language and it's all linked lists everything's linked lists yeah, basically. They don't even use for loops. They, they starting at the beginning of the linked list, going to the end. Yeah. Okay, so let's do a delete. Let's write a delete function. It's not coffee. It's chai. Chai is too. Alright. Uh, where'd my delete go? I had to delete in here somewhere. There you are. Delete by name. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> delete my name, string key. Uh, here, let me let me see if I can help you out, Bazookian. Uh, I will change the stream quality to 30 FPS and 1080p. So let me know. Let me know if that will help you with the stream quality. Um, all right. So for uh, okay. So this code right here is printing the linked list. This is not deleting it. <laughs> It's not delete. So what we want to do is we want to go through the linked list until we find the person we're looking for, right? And uh, text editor gameplay is only 30 FPS. It is now. Yeah, sorry. You're not getting that buttery smooth frame rate on Discord anymore. All right. So 
Uh, for okay, so if so, how do we know we found the person we're looking for? All right. So down here, we're gonna have delete by name. Uh, we're gonna have all these people, and let's delete. Um, uh, let's delete Lester, I guess. Budding list dot delete by name. Lester. Okay. So, how do we know that when we found Lester? So we're we're gonna delete by name, which means we're gonna we're gonna search through the linked list, and once we find uh, once we find Lester, how do we know what's the line of code to tell if we found if we have successfully found Lester? What? If statement is an empty body, I know. What do you cost? There's no cost here. There's no cost for deleting by name. For you for assignment, you're going to pass in a cost, and if you find a cost greater than the cost of the node, you delete it. But here we're deleting if we get a match. If the node is equal to the key, if what node? Give me, give me some code. Give me some code. If what? Cur is a pointer. It starts off pointing at the head. If it doesn't match, then we go to the next one. If that doesn't match, we go to the next one. If that doesn't match, we go to the next one. So how do we tell we got a match? Okay, if cur, very good. If cur points to data equals key. We have found the person we're gonna delete. Okay, cool. Um, and then, and then we need to delete them. Now, an interesting question is what if we have duplicates? Do we delete everybody with a name or do we just delete the first one? And that's a question I will leave to more intelligent minds. Um, but for now, it's a story about um, how to delete. Okay, so if we found a match. So how many different base cases are there to deal with? How many, how many different weird edge cases are there? How many special cases are there in a linked list? Three? Four? Four? Yeah. I'd say four. Uh, so first case is, uh, is the list empty? Right. Uh, and this thing here, ironically, is handling that as well. Uh, two, uh, actually I'd say if uh, the key isn't in the list, right, you, you need to make sure you handle that properly. Because if, if you do something like this and go like size minus minus, then you should make damn well sure that it's in the list first and we're actually doing it here. Um, so deleting the head is another special case. Deleting the tail is another special case. And those could be the same node. And then deleting from the middle. Okay. So you need to make sure to handle all of those things. And uh, this little crappy thing that I'm doing here, which is wasting order and effort, is going to handle the first two cases. Again, I'm just making my life simpler. In practice, I would not write it this way because this would double the running time of the code. If the key isn't in the list, should we call die? Uh, I mean, for my wedding list thing, no, nah, I'm just going to return. Um, it depends on your situation. If it really should be in there, then yeah, call call die, throw an exception, something like that. For this thing, if, if you try deleting somebody out of my wedding list that's not there, it'll just return. It won't do anything. Um, I'm not the standard library author. I don't just crash if something doesn't exist. <laughs> um, it's your responsibility to check it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. It is. It is a performance issue. Okay, so, uh, so if we get a match, now we need to delete. Okay, so. So let's say we're going to delete Moya. So we need to do the exact opposite from what we did in the quiz. If we're going to delete Moya out of the linked list here, we need to do the exact opposite of the question on the quiz. 
All right, so I've already got the size minus minus in there, so we don't need to worry about that thing that's covered. Um, and I know we can decrement the size because it's in the list somewhere, right? So uh, mm, then we should probably make sure there's only one of them. Yeah. And then I'll just put a return there. So if there's duplicate entries, it won't delete. Oh, damn, I can't do that. Mm. Uh, yeah, break is the correct thing, correct thing here. Okay, so that'll end the for loop. So the first time we delete somebody, it breaks out of the for loop. So if you want to delete all the Nick and Muyas, you got to delete, call delete multiple times. I don't feel so good, Mr. Kearney. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. He got better. So what do we need to do? So there is, uh, first of all, we need to deallocate. Well, maybe not first of all, because that's going to cause problems. But one of the things, one of the lines of code we definitely need to do is actually, actually deallocate the memory, right? Like that's, you don't want to leak memory. So if you're going to delete somebody out of the list, you need to put a delete in there. And that's probably going to be last, right? So that'll probably be down at the, the end of this here. We will say delete cur. So we've currently got a pointer called cur. Uh, in this case, in this case, cur is pointed at Nick. Okay. And we need to fix all these pointers. So we're going to delete this guy. And so I like to draw the deletion first because that makes it very clear which pointers need to change. I actually don't need to change the pointers coming out of Nick because who cares? They're going to go away. They're getting deleted. So I don't need to care about this pointer. I don't need to care about this pointer. They're going to go away anyway. Who cares? But the pointers coming into it, the pointers coming into it, these guys are going to become dangling references. A dangling reference is when you have a pointer to something that no longer exists. And this is what we call in the industry a bad thing. So this pointer here and this pointer here. So A's next needs to point to B and B's previous needs to point to A. And that's about all we need to do for this case, right? So uh, so B's previous needs to be set to current's previous. Current's previous is pointing at A, right? And A's next, which is currently pointing at Nick, needs to point at Nick's next, which is B. So we need to do this. So again, with ink, erase, and do this. Bloop. That's a line of code. Bloop. That's a line of code. Right. So um, uh, current points to. Uh, <laughs> let's do it the bad way first. Uh, uh, nah, eh, yeah, let's do it the bad way first. Current's previous next. So that's A's next is going to be equal to set to, it's going to be set to be equal to our next, which is currently B, right? So it's going to set A's next to be ours next. So that makes A point to B. And then current, current's next, that's B. That, I mean, that's literally, current points to next is the same thing as saying B, right? So B's previous is equal to our previous. And we're done. Or are we? I don't know. What's the first thing you should always do when working with a pointer? Whenever you work with pointers, what do you got to do first? It's a habit you got to get into. Sanitize. I'm sure it's not null. Yeah, so we know that current is not null. And we know that because of this bad Oscar right here. So the for loop will, uh, it, when you get to the top of the run, uh, the top of the loop iteration, if current is null, it bails out. So we know that current's not null. We haven't modified cur anywhere within here. We haven't said current equals uh, previous or any of that stuff. We haven't modified cur. So we know we don't have to check to see if null cur, cur is null because this is doing it for us. But that guy, we need to make sure is not null because it could be the head of the list, remember? So if we're at the head of the list, then, uh, then our previous pointer is going to be null. And we're going to say null points to next, null pointer dereference, Brett the Hitman heart comes out and uh, puts you into the uh, sharpshooter. So uh, that we need to make sure is not null. And also this guy we need to make sure is not null. Okay. Anytime you dereference, anytime you dereference a pointer like that and that, you need to make sure the pointer first is not null. And so we can say if cur points to previous.
So if the head pointer is not null, set the, or sorry, not the head pointer. If if the previous pointer, if the previous pointer is not null, then set the previous guy's next to be our next. If our next pointer is not null, set our next guy. Uh, our next guy's previous to be our previous. Okay, and so that will prevent a seg fault. Now, what edge cases are we not handling? I think this is actually a correct delete from the middle. If we're deleting from the middle, uh, ac actually these 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 if statements here will only come up if you're at the uh, if you're at uh, an edge, right? Head and tail they need to be updated. Yeah, so we can actually just put an else statement in here, right? So if if current points to previous is null, then head is equal to um, current points to next or head. It means we're the head, <laughs> right? So we can either say head is equal to head points to next, or we can say head equals cur points to next, because head and, head and cur are going to be pointing at the same node, the first element. So it doesn't really matter which one. And so uh, this, and then else, we do the tail. If we have a next pointer, that means we're not the tail, right? If we have somebody after us, we're not at the end. So otherwise, uh, so if cur points to next is null, we're the tail. And so tail is equal to tail points previous, or tail is equal to current points previous. What if we're both the head and the tail? I think it'll actually handle it, because heads next will be set to be currents next. If currents next is null, heads going to be set to null. If tails, uh, if you're both the head and the tail, tail will be set to our previous, which is null. So it's actually going to set head and tail to null automatically for us. So that's it. We're done. So that is that is delete. Yeah, I can leave this one. Whatever. There you go. So five lines of code plus uh, updating the updating the size. What do you guys think? That's it. That's these are all the operations you need to know for the for the assignment for linked lists in general. Insert insert in the middle, delete from the middle, push and pop from the front and the back. That is the magic right there for deleting from the middle. Let me run it first just to make sure that it's not going to seg fault, huh? So C CPP check is uh, complaining about the use of emoji. That's funny. Uh, since our previous and next are functions, what's the difference between using next as opposed to get next? So get next will return a copy of it. You can't, like some people um, have been trying to do this, like, uh, let me just find some unused code down here. They're trying to do something like this, like current points to get next. They're trying to set that equal to current points to, no, you can't do that. Get next returns a, a copy of your current next. What you need to do is say current points to set next. If you're going to be changing it, you use set next. You don't use equal sign. So set next equal to current points to uh, get previous. I don't know. I, I don't really know what what you're trying to do with it, but in this case, it will set currents. Uh, it'll set currents next pointer to be currents previous pointer. I don't know why you do that, but that's the general idea. So you use you use a function call rather than assignment operator. Okay, like this. Or you can write an equals operator that will do that for you. Uh, but yeah, so set and get look like that. So get returns a copy. It's just an integer. It just returns an integer. And then set next will set its next pointer to be that integer passed in. So you can't say current points in x equals temp. Right, you can't. You would have to say, uh, you'd have to say current equals current points to uh, get next, something like that, uh, instead of this, right? Up here, this is the pods way of doing things. Current equals current points to next. Everything's public. And the reason why this is actually fine in my code is because is because I made the node class private, right? I've got a private node class up here. This is a pods version of it. It's not actually exposed to main. So main doesn't know anything about the node class. 
And so this is fine because um, my list class has the node class encapsulated inside of it. There's nothing being exposed to the outside world. It's actually fine from a class design perspective and it allows you to write a little bit simpler code. For the EU4 assignment though, you can't do that because the node class is separate from the list class so that it can be tested, right? If, if you do it this way, you can't, you, the tester won't work because you can't test the node class because it can't see the node class. And so for the EU4 assignment, the node class is separate. It would be, you know, uh, E60. And the EU4 assignment, it's like this, right? It's outside of the list class. And, and the reason for that is because I have a tester in there that tests the node class to make sure it works right. And so um, it's just a different design of it. They're both, they're both fine ways of doing it. But if, if, it's, if the node class is outside of the list class, then you need to do proper class design, make it a class, not a struct. Uh, uh, add getters and setters and constructors and destructors and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and so it'll it'll look a little different. Like uh, you know, my code, my code looks like this for the example, and I'm doing this deliberately, so you can't just copy and paste my code. <laughs> like every time I post example code, I find it copied and pasted in chunks and students' homework, and I kind of want you guys to write it yourself, right, rather than just copy and pasting my stuff. Um, for example, rather than you're deleting by key, this code here is going to delete the first person whose name matches. You're going to take in an integer and you're going to delete the first person whose cost is below the cost passed in. So that, that line will be a little bit different. This will be a little bit different. Instead of cur points to prev, it's going to be cur points to get prev. Right? So, that's the ADT kind of way of doing things. That's the pods way of doing things. They're basically the same thing. As always, the ADT way is more typey. It's more verbose. Get next and set next to the public versions. Yeah. So that's the interface. Um, get next and set next. Okay. Right, so that is that is all of uh, that's all the example code. I'll copy this up here. Copy uh, main.cc into Gonna actually just move it. I'm done with you, public. Actually, <laughs> let's compile it first and make sure it works. Huh? I'm so confident in my programming skills. Okay, yeah, so Lester is deleted. Okay, cool. Um, I'm sure the other cases will work. I don't even need to test them. I'm sure it's fine. So copy main.cc into public link list.h, make it publicly visible. And so if you guys want to copy the code, it's in slash public slash link list.h. And uh, you can, you can like I was kind of being sarcastic about you guys copying and pasting it. Uh, I, I would like for you guys to look at it and it will serve as a good reference to you guys, but you can't just use it verbatim. You have to, um, you have to change it. So you just get next and set next and stuff like that. So yeah, a big part of programming is finding examples and adapting them to your needs. Um, so, and, and also when, or, or I would actually recommend you try writing it yourself. And if you're, if you're like, yeah, it feels like I'm missing something. Because like I, 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 back in the day when you could have office hours face to face, uh, students would come into my office hours and be like, yeah, I'm, my codes, it works fine when I print it forwards, but it doesn't work when I'm going backwards. I'm like, did you remember to set your previous pointers right? They're like, oh yeah. Because you just forget one of those things, you know, and then a pointer gets misdone and, and it's game over, right? And so I'm gonna actually pull up some source code from a student. He uh, went on to uh, he went on to have a successful computer science career, but when he took this class, um, he did not do very well. Um, and the reason for that was um, it's hard. <laughs> you know, writing writing linked list code is hard, and it and and I'm making you do it not because you're necessarily going to write a linked list class, although you could. Um, in, in some circumstances, there, there are needs for writing a, a list class. I actually dreamed last night about a, writing a program for some reason. It's probably because I've been doing so much game development and it, it needed a linked list to go through it. I was doing some clever things like splitting the list in half and things like that um, without copying anything. Um, and so if, if you forget, forget to move a head pointer or a tail pointer, things are going to go badly. And sometimes lots of things go badly. So let's pull up... Um, let's see lists on this one not on that one 
either. Okay, where is... Here we go. Yeah, there. No. Use one of all things. Uh, good practice is to not copy paste things until you're better at understanding it. Yeah, yeah. Try it yourself. Try doing it yourself, and then go through my code and see if you forgot to set one of the pointers. You know what I mean? Um, that, that's actually a pretty good thing. Like in Japanese, my Japanese instructor has been posting the answers to all the homework. But what I do is I work it out myself, and then I look at how she did it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot a particle there or something like that. You know what I mean? If I just copied her thing directly, I wouldn't learn anything. You have to do it yourself and then check. You know, and, and, and the code that I gave you, you can't just copy paste anyway. But it, but if like um, there's a pointer being set somewhere that you forgot, you can look at my code and be like, oh yeah, I forgot to set that. So let me show you guys. Um, let me show you guys uh, his code. I'm not going to give you his name, uh, but uh, this is actual code that was, um, he came from my office hours and um, needed help fixing it, and it required a lot of fixing. So I've color-coded these things for you. So uh, orange is the actual uh, core functionality, right? For the um, for the delete function we just did, um, this dot h, those, aren't, those are not ones, by the way, those are l's. Um, for the delete, uh, delete function, what is the core functionality? What is the most important, what is when you, when you expect delete to take place, what is the core thing that you expect to take place in a delete function? Like what's the heart of the of the matter? Right? Not the cleanup, but what's the main what's the main thing that needs to be done? Is Stack Overflow better than C reference? It can be. Um, it, it sometimes CPP reference doesn't have a very good example source code. And uh, or, or a lot of times they try giving you one example of all the different ways a function could be used. And that can, can, can it, it can be confusing because it's like there's five options. Which one do I pick from? And it just has five different cases and it doesn't explain really what you need. Um, with a stack, stack Overflow, you can sometimes get a better answer. And then sometimes Stack Overflow will confuse you because the question on Stack Overflow has sample source code, but it's broken, right? The reason why they're asking on Stack Overflow is because their code doesn't work. And so a lot of students go on to Stack Overflow and they find a question and they copy and paste the bad code that doesn't work that they're trying to get help for. And then their code is bad. So, uh, yeah, so the correct, the most important thing here is this line right here, right? So the core functionality is actually deleting the node, freeing up the memory, right? And then the rest of this is just kind of like cleanup, right? So, uh, so anything that's core functionality, I'm going to color code as this kind of gold color. Right, the actual deleting, the actual adding, okay. and then the class invariants I have color coded as well. Do you guys remember these? Um, list size always has to hold the correct size of the list. That's going to be in green. Uh, the head pointer always has to point to the first element of the list. If it's if the list is empty, head is null. Uh, tail pointer must always pass to the end of the list. If it doesn't exist, it's null. Okay, and so anytime you modify a linked list. Anytime you modify a linked list, you're going to want to see all four of these colors. Right? You got to have the core functionality. Like if you if you do a push back or something like that and there's no actual new statement, you're like that's a problem. You don't you didn't actually new anything, you know what I mean? And if you if you have a push back function and you don't see any reference to head at all, that code's bad, right? Cuz if you push into an empty list, head needs to be set right? And tail needs to be set if you push into an empty list. And so uh, what I TA'd this class, I, I TA data structures at UC San Diego for a while. And I, I reached this sort of like uh, Neo, you know, the Matrix movies level of looking at code where I could just like glance at somebody's code and be like, yeah, that code's not going to work. They're like, how do you know? You didn't even read it. I'm like, yeah, the word tail didn't appear anywhere within your list. And that's a delete function. And so because tail didn't appear anywhere within your delete function, I know that your list is going to break if you delete the last element out of it. And sure enough, and they're like, no, my code works fine. So I'd push one, push two, push three, pop, 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 try inserting something new, seg fault, right? How did you know that? I'm like, because these are the invariants, right? These must always be true. Every time you modify a linked list, all of these things are should be in your code somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, if you delete and I don't see size getting updated, 
your code's bad. If I see push and I don't see size getting updated, your code's bad. You know what I mean? Like if the word size appears nowhere with, it doesn't even mean it's correct if you have it, but if it's not in there at all, uh, I guarantee your code's not gonna work right. And it's it's like, a, you know, it's like, you know, the, I don't know, they, they thought I was like some sort of wizard or something, right? I'm, I'm just sitting there like, hmm, yeah, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. <laughs> scroll, 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 mm -mm, no, if your code's bad. How do you know it's gonna seg fault on an empty list? How did you know that? Well, it's right there. It's, you know, it's right there in the matrix, you know. <laughs> uh, I was I was uh, debugging like uh, they were doing code to solve a maze, and um, I was just scrolling through it. And I'm like, <clears throat> they never, uh, you know, you got code to go right, you got code to go down, you got code to go left. You don't have any code to go up. And so your maze is not going to work if there's ever a, you know, kind of a U-turn going upwards. And they're like, how did you know that? I'm like, well, you know, you have three if statements, not four. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you just kind of look at the shape of something and be like, hmm, yeah. there it is. There's your problem right there. It's the woman in red. Yeah, right there. Taste of steak. Uh, no, it's not, it's not about being a wizard. It's like when you start thinking about code, and you guys can do this too. When you start thinking about code, and you're going to do it right now, this is the exercise we're going to do. Um, I'm going to show you the bad code, and you guys going to be me. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to show you guys bad code, and you guys are going to be me. And so the easiest way of finding a bug is by thinking about these four things, right? The the functionality. Did it actually delete something in a pop function, right? If you don't see any delete in there, it's wrong, right? Did it update the size? Did it update head? Did it update tail? And I just color coded the things, right? So you can just be like, there's no, yeah. Okay, so here we go. So here is, here's my code for a push, okay? Uh, so here's my code for push, right? So this is gonna add to the end of the linked list. And I think this is just a single linked list for simplicity, right? So it creates a new node, it sets, uh, oh no, it's pushing on the top. It's a push front, I guess. So it creates, it allocates memory, uh, this is a linked list of integers, it looks like. So it allocates the memory, core functionality, push should always allocate memory, right? Um, it's somewhat, some sense or another. Uh, and then the head pointer is being pointed to it. Uh, the tail pointer is, uh, if the list is empty, the tail pointer is pointed, then updates its size, okay? What's wrong with this code? Anything? Did I forget to do anything? I'm allocating a new node, moving the head up to the top. If the list was empty, I set the tail pointer to point to the, the new guy and update the size. So Harry Singh points out, next is not being set. Ah, but if you look right here in my constructor, I'm setting the next on the new guy to be the head pointer. So it's actually correct. If this was a doubly linked list, uh, heads previous should be set as well. This is just a singly linked list, and so this this code is actually correct. But uh, good 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 catch, Mr. Singh. Um, yeah, I don't see anywhere on here new pointer points to next equals head pointer, but it's actually right here. Yep. So here is his code. <clears throat> here is his code. So he's got a list class. Uh, is that an O instead of a zero? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I think that's a zero. Okay, so here's his code. So take a moment uh, and uh, take a moment and tell me if you see any bugs. Orange is gold is core functionality. Red is setting the head pointer. Blue is setting the tail pointer. Green is setting the size. <clears throat> I will answer no questions. We'll tell you no lies. Just take a look at it and see if you can find any bugs in it. I'll give you a hint. There's a lot of things wrong with this code. I think the only thing he does correctly is uh, updating the size. I think the size of the list is the only thing he did correct in this code. 
I think literally every other line of code is wrong. Good, good, good. Yeah, you guys are picking up a lot of these things. And so this is one of the reasons why I actually encourage students to be TAs. Like what Mr. Mui is doing right now, uh, we don't have TAs because we're a community college. We have uh, uh, peer tutors or... What, what's your what's your actual title, Nick? Mui here. STEM tutor? He's a STEM tutor. Um, yeah, TAs are technically grad students. Uh, I was what's called an undergraduate TA or a proctor, they're called sometimes. I don't like the word proctor because that sounds like a proctologist. I don't know. I don't like that term. Tutors, they're called sometimes, like here. Uh, what are, there, there's a lot of weird terms for undergraduate TAs, but we were called undergraduate TAs because we had office hours. Like I would go into a lab and have office hours and students would come in and present their code and I'd look at it. And one of the reasons why I recommend that students do that is because when you get good at debugging other people's code, you get good at debugging your own code. And you get really good at identifying bugs. And the less time you spend having to, to debug your own code, the more productive you are. And when you explain things to people, you understand it better yourself. So I didn't really understand linked list until I had to explain it to people over and over again. And then I finally like clicked for me like, okay, I actually understand everything that's happening here. Okay. Do you get paid for it? Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. I got paid... 15 bucks an hour, I think, in the 90s, you know? So in, in modern days, they're probably getting paid about 15 bucks an hour. <laughs> it's just the way these things are going. Might be all the way up to a whopping $20 an hour now, despite inflation, you know? Uh, Moya, do you, mind, do you mind saying how much uh, tutors are getting, getting paid right now at the TC? You're getting paid minimum wage? Okay, sorry, you get paid less than I did. In my day, minimum wage is $5 an hour. The federal, federal minimum wage is $5 an hour. So we got paid triple that. So you should be getting paid 30 Will you? Okay. All right. So I've got a bunch of uh, good answers up here. Uh, and so, yeah. And so getting into this mindset of looking at code and finding bugs. And if you think about class invariance, you can just see what's missing, right? Okay. So in this case, uh, push... So it's a singly linked list. So he's saying node, new node, new data, null. So his next pointer is going to be set to be null. And that's wrong, right? Like the next pointer should be set to be the head, right? So it's not going to be linking up. It's not going to be linking up the new person to head. I don't know if anybody picked up on that. Um, null, yeah, Buzuki and Fix uh, found that. Uh, the first line is right. The first line is not right. <laughs> The, this is a lot of people picked up on the fact this is not actually newing anything. If you name a variable new node, that doesn't actually call new. This is this does not do any memory allocation. This is going to stack allocate something, and so this is actually really, really, really bad code. This is horrifically bad code. Um, let me show you why. So when you uh, when you have your memory map right, you have your stack up here. You have your data segment down here. And the code is at the very bottom down here, right above the minefield of doom. Minefield of doom. Okay. Anyway. Uh, the stack, every time you call a function, the stack grows down. And every time you return from a function, the stack goes up and it unallocates all that memory automatically. When you allocate off the data segment, the data segment will go up and it'll permanently allocate memory somewhere within the data segment for you until you call delete on it. Now, what is happening here? This, just because he called it new node, does not actually call new. This is not allocated off the, the data segment, the heap. Um, it is allocated off the stack. This is a stack allocated variable. When do stack allocated variables go away? This code compiles, yeah, that's the scary thing. This code compiles. His code compiled, it would run, and it, mm, it did not work well. Uh, at the end of main, nope, this code actually goes away here. This, this variable lives until here. Technically, when you return from the function, that memory will be reclaimed. But the scope of this variable, a destructor would get called on it here at the first curly, curly brace. Technically, it'll be, it'll be here. And so if you set head pointer to be the address of new node, because head pointer is a pointer, right? Uh, and so it is, it is going to, so head, head is going to be pointing at somebody on the stack. 
right? New node is a variable on the stack. When you return from this function, that memory is unallocated and head is now pointing at an unallocated chunk of memory. So is tail. So head is pointing uh, at somewhere, you know, I'm just gonna draw it as a giant curly thing pointing at a question mark, because that memory has been unallocated. And you know, tail is also pointing at it, right? So tail is also pointing at the same unallocated chunk of memory. Cool, cool times right there. Why does your code sometimes seg fault? Because it does, <laughs> yes it does. Because you're, you've got a pointer pointing off into La La Land, and so is your tail. And so this is, uh, you, you never want to take a pointer to a stack allocated variable like this. Or if you do, make damn well sure that that pointer is not going to live beyond the scope. Uh, if you if you would take a pointer to a stack allocated variable, after that thing returns, the, the, those pointers are all invalid, and you have done something very very bad indeed. So this is this is this is what we call a no, right here. <laughs> Eventually, failures become success. Yeah. So um, when my uh, when my cousin, she's like uh, I don't know, entering. She's in like eighth grade now or something. Um, when she uh, when she was a, a uh, one or two years old, we, we would play a game with her, like, you know, what sound does a cow make? Moo. What sound does a sheep make? Ba. What sound does Uncle Bill make? Ra. So I tried uh, scaring her one time, and so that she remembered that. What sound does Mommy make? No. <laughs> what sound do mommies make? No. <laughs> That's the... Uh, most common word she heard, I guess. So, uh, so this is what we call a no. Never ever do this. Uh, when you're working with pointers, you almost never pass a pointer by reference. Don't pass a pointer by reference. Don't take a reference to a pointer. Uh, don't you know? Just use new and pointers. Like the the code that I have in there, you saw I didn't use I didn't use references at all because a pointer is a reference, really. Um, behind the scenes, a pointer and a reference are more or less the same thing. So don't mix them up. Don't intermingle them. Um, I use new. New returns a pointer. I capture the pointer. Set things to be pointers. Uh, so you need to use new. This code does not use new. So this needs to be new. And as a couple of you guys said, this needs to be a node pointer. Node pointer, uh, you know, whatever equals new, whatever. And so this doesn't allocate memory. It invalidates the tail pointer and the head pointer. Uh, this line of code here is actually kind of problematic here. Because if he ever, if he, so hit, this code only triggers if both head is null and tail is null. And so what if, what if his code screws up, which it did incidentally, and he sets one of them to be null and the other one not to be null. Shouldn't happen, but what if, right? And so I would actually change this from an and to an or. So if either of them is null, then we're gonna just make a new list from scratch, right? Uh, just as a safety measure. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. If you're preserving your invariance, it won't matter. But I would say if either of them is null, let's just start over, make a new, new list from scratch. We're, we're going to leak memory, sure, but that's better than, than seg vaulting. Okay, so down here, same problem. Naming something new node does not new it. Head pointer points to set next address of new node. So what's wrong with that? Remember we got a we got a linked list, we got one and two and three and stuff like that. It's a singly linked list. And this new thing here is gonna come up here. I'm gonna put the number 42 in here. What's wrong with this? There's two, a couple things wrong with it, technically. Good thing the student asked for help, yeah, it is. And actually after the semester is over, what he did was after he finally kind of started grasping all of the assignments. He actually went back and read it all of them from scratch, which is way more dedication, I can tell you, than I have in real life. Uh, but he actually went through and re-implemented all of them to get the practice at it. And when he went to Fresno State, he actually did pretty well. But his uh, uh, his initial attempts were not, you know, I'm not mocking him, by the way. Like, like I made all sorts of dumbass mistakes, you know, when I was doing linked lists. You know, I'm not any better. The reason why I'm doing this is that you guys get the experience of looking at bad code and it will help you identify bugs in your own code too. 
Hit points to next is still allocated, but you can't access it. Yeah. So what this is trying to do is, so we've just, well, there's a couple things wrong with it, right? So where did the thing go? Um, so head points to next is now pointing at the new head, right? And head doesn't get set, right? So head is now not moving. So to this, this guy, so all the memory down here is now leaked. All the memory down here now cannot be accessed. We've just added 42 to the head of the linked list, but it's not actually the head now. He didn't actually change the head pointer. He set heads next to be the new guy. So it's actually inserting it second in the list. So if you had one, two, three before, and you inserted 42, the list actually changes to be 142. And if you do another insert, let's say we insert 50, we allocate 50, uh, then heads next, rather than pointing at 42, now points at 50, and 50 points at head. And so if you insert 50, it changes into 150. So it, in, it it's not actually inserting at the beginning of the linked list. It's inserting second in the linked list. And uh, it and it leaks memory every time. Every time you, you call this function, it'll leak, it'll leak memory. And on top of that, it's these things are not actually nude anywhere. They are stack allocated. And so the second any of these functions return, all of these things get invalidated, including head. So every single element in your linked list is invalid. And so they will just randomly change and RAM and his code was just printing random numbers out. And uh, sometimes it would be like 142, 150, and then it would just be like, blah, you know, and it would print out 500 elements. And it was because uh, those things were, he was entirely operating with memory that was unallocated. And when it's unallocated, that memory can be reallocated and changed arbitrarily. And so his code was running differently every time. And it was very, very uh, fascinating to watch, honestly. And sort of a horror sort of thing. Set next is refacing it, not pointing. So what, what this should have been, he should have... Uh, oh, actually, yeah. It's, a head point, it's actually setting his next, not to be head even. So, sorry, it was like this. It was like one... It was like one and two and three like this. And so if we inserted 42, uh, it sets 42's next to point to heads next and it sets heads next to be 42. So it actually just keeps inserting into the second place in the linked list rather than rather than the top. <laughs> and this is just the this is just the push function. And the push function, mind you, should be that big. That's that's all it takes. Uh, linked list codes are usually actually pretty short. Um, you know, most of them are like four or five lines of code. You know, maybe a for loop or something also. But um, they, they don't actually require that much code. If, you're, if your code is like multiple pages long, it's probably wrong um, for like a function. So, uh, yeah. So here's this pop function. So I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you. And uh, if you see a bug in any of the lines, just put it on Discord. And then after I get done reading through it, uh, you can tell me, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go through your responses. But before I do read it to you, what color is missing? What color is missing from here? Red. And so red is the head pointer, right? The uh, Nowhere within this code is head pointer being set. There's not one line of code in here that says head pointer equals something, right? It's used cursor equals head pointer and he not head. Nowhere within this code does it say head pointer equals null or head pointer equals this, right? So he's got a delete function that never changes the head pointer. So no head. Why is pop returning in it? He's returning the value that's deleted. It's a very common thing. The, the standard library, in my opinion, is a little weird. Because when you delete, when you call pop front, it, it doesn't return the value that was deleted. Um, in the standard library, you call front to get the, the first element in the linked list. You call front to get it, and then you call pop front to delete it. And, or you call back to get the last element in, in the linked list. Then you call pop back to delete it. Um, a lot of people, when they make a linked list class, they combine the two together. So pop back will return the last element and delete it at the same time. So you don't need two different function calls, uh, which I kind of prefer, honestly. So this code is supposed to delete, this code is supposed to delete the last element in the linked list and return the data. 
So why no head equals null? Because the code's wrong. Yeah. And so just by skimming this, and there's a lot of code here, and my head started hurting looking at it. Um, I just skimmed it. I'm like, you never set head to be null. So this code will not work when you pop off the last element in the linked list. Okay. Tail pointer is getting set. I don't know if it's ever getting set to null, but this will create a situation like I talked about here where he might be setting tail pointer to be null and head pointer doesn't ever get set to null. And so he thought this was correct and it kind of, kind of could be correct. Uh, but it will create a situation where these, like if they, they, they should either both be null or neither should be null, but he actually created a situation where one is null and one is not. And that's why I said as a safety measure, I would use or there instead, or even just check for it. If, if, if one's null and not the other die, right? Like I, I did a, I made an oopsie. Right. You're not able to follow his logic. Okay, let me, let me. So, like I said, before we even go into the logic, just look at the colors. There's no red in there. Nowhere within this code do we set head equal to null. The code's wrong, right? And if we look at some of the other things, uh, uh, um, I don't think I have it in here. But looking at the other ones, he left off some of the invariants of the other ones. Like he, he would forget this the to set list size in one of them, and he would, and, and that's why thinking about thinking about um, thinking about invariance, like what must be true for the class. When you get into that mindset of there's four things that must be true, you can look at every function and be like, does it, did, did he think about them? You know, and when you're writing code, did I, did I consider all the different edge cases? Did I consider all the different invariants? And if you do that, you will write good code. Probably. If you don't, uh, let's put it the other way. If you don't think about the invariants, you're going to forget some of them and your code will not work. It'll be bad. So let's go through the logic here. If not head pointer and not tail pointer, return false. Which, um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, false is zero. So technically this will work, but false is a Boolean, not an integer. I wouldn't do that. Um, I also don't think returning zero is necessarily the best thing. It might've been in the homework assignment that you return zero if, it was, if you pop off an empty list. It's better than seg faulting. So in, in this respect, he's doing better than the standard library. So. If you make an empty linked list and call pop back on it, it's seg faults. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, technically he's he's got a sanity check in here, I guess. Um, okay, so that's kind of okay. I would just use zero, you know, here instead of false. You know what I mean? So I'd make it an integer at least. Um, but I mean, false is zero. Hey, I'm not gonna complain too much. There's, way worse things that he's doing. All right, so we've got int data, okay? And so uh, one, again, minor criticism, I would combine these two things into one line, right? Because he's creating integer data and then saying data equals temp uh, or tail points to get data. There's no reason for these two things to be on two different lines. I'd put them on one line. Um, it's just taking up, taking up space, you know what I mean? Uh, that's a trivial concern. It doesn't, it doesn't actually make a difference. So we are getting uh, we are getting the last element, right? This this here get saves saves the value at the end of the array. Okay, and then later on he returns it. So that looks good to me. That's core functionality, right? So the core functionality of pop. There's two things that have to happen in this version of pop. One is you return the the value. That's at the end, and the other is you delete delete the end and move the pointer up. Okay, so so okay okay. So I mean, so far so good. You know, it's minor criticism so far. This is style, you know, I don't I don't mark students off for style. Um, it's just style. Um, so here we go, and here's another thing. These two lines should be combined together as well, right? Whatever, I don't care. Okay. So cursor, he's setting cursor equal to the head of the list. So we've, let's say we've got three elements in the linked list. And one, and two, and three. And one's next points to two, and two's next points to three, and three's next points to uh, null. Uh, okay, so we're create. we got a head pointer here. Uh, got a head pointer. We got a tail pointer. And we got cursor. So cursor is being set to this guy, okay? All right, so 
Do you notice how he does not use the for loop that I recommend? Right? He's using a standard integer for loop. Rather than uh, rather than this, right? Oh, it's complaining about something. Assert doesn't exist. So he's he wants to do just a standard for loop, and so. What he wants, what he's trying to do is he's trying to get the cursor to move to the one above the tail, because he because pop is going to delete the last element of the linked list. So what he wants to do is he wants cursor to move from wherever it is all the way down to one above the the tail, and so that's why he put the list size minus one here. But notice he didn't follow the pattern that I teach in C C forty. He used less than or equal to, right? So. Uh, this has the effect of going one further than he thought he was going. Okay. And also, he didn't consider the fact that he started at head. Right. So let's 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 run through his logic here. So the list size here is three. Right. We got three nodes, so size is three. So uh, four anti equals zero. I is less than three minus one is two. I plus plus. How many times does this for loop run? If you say for int i equals zero, i is less than or equal to two, i plus plus, how many times does it run? Not two. If you followed the normal pattern, it would be two. Not two. Less than or equal to, how many times does it run? Three big ones. Yeah. So this is going to run three times. And so three times, it's going to set cursor equal to cursor points to next. Okay? So his code here is going to go into uh, one and two and a three. So this code is guaranteed to do what? Cursor is guaranteed to be what after this code runs? Not a seg fault. It's not a seg fault because he never dereferences the null pointer. The very last line of code is he takes, he sets cursor equal to tails next, which is null. You can set cursor equal to null, that's fine. But if you ever, if you, if you did it again and said cursor equals cursor points to next again, then it would be dereferencing an old pointer and it would seg fault. So cursor is guaranteed to be equal to, as you say, null. After this code runs. He thought this code, he thought this code would run uh, like it would it would put cursor one above the tail and said his cursor is going one past the tail. And so his code was having problems. Okay. So he sets cursor equal to null every time. This is a order n. <laughs> this is an order n way of setting cur equal to null. <laughs> he could have replaced all that code by just saying current equals zero and just calling it a day. It's one operation. It'll seg fault much faster than if he had to go through a billion elements in the list to set it to null. Okay. So yeah, here comes the sharpshooter. Okay. So uh, all this code does after this code runs. We're just going to replace all this code here with just cursor, cursor equals zero there. It's much faster. All right, so node pointer, temp pointer equals tail pointer. So we create another pointer. And this guy we're going to call, where's my mouse? There it is. We're going to call this guy temp. So temp is also going to point at tail. Cool. So we got cur. Cur is currently pointing at null. Temp's pointing at tail. Tail's pointing at tail. Head's like hanging out over there. Um, okay, cool. So tail pointer equals cursor. So tail pointer is now pointing to null, neat. So tail should have been pointing at this guy, that's what he was intending to do, but because he had a off by two error, he uh, now has tail set it to, to null. So um, yeah, that code is technically, this code would be fine if the for loop worked right, you know. Temp pointer equals null, so temp pointer, I don't know, I don't even know why we have a temp pointer. Uh, so temp pointer now equals null, we just, set it equal to null. I don't know why. We, we copied we copied the pointer and then we set it to null. I don't know why. I don't know why we would do that. Um, seems counterproductive to set it equal to one thing then immediately set it to something else. Uh, a lot of students think that this deletes code. Do you guys see that? 
uh, 10 pointer equals null. A lot of students think that if you set a pointer to null, it deletes whatever that pointer was pointing at, and it doesn't. Remember, a pointer is just an integer. So before, temp pointer held the memory address of tail pointer. So if the memory address of tail pointer was 10,000, uh, temp pointer was just an integer holding the number 10,000. Okay. And now we set it to be zero. It doesn't delete anything. When you delete something, it doesn't set it to zero. Those are two, do two totally different things. Pointers are just integers. And so this, the, these two things here are, um, it's not good. And then he deletes null, right? So then he deletes null, which doesn't do anything. If you pass a null pointer to delete, it just ignores it. So the delete doesn't actually delete tail, right? Um, and then he seg faults. So, so what he should have done here was rather than, he didn't need, I don't think, I don't, I don't know if he needed 10 pointer at all, but uh, he should have just uh, not had that line there. If he had not had that line there, then it would have successfully deleted this memory. Uh, yeah. Um, except um, tail is set to null, so <laughs> still, still kind of wouldn't work. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the spirit was good, at least here. Uh, here, this code would never work. If you set 10 pointer equal to null and try deleting null, it does nothing. This code is literally, this code literally does nothing. Uh, and then tail pointer sets to set next null. So tail pointer is currently null, right? He is dereferencing a null pointer. He is saying zero points to something bad. It, anytime you use null points to something, you have dereferenced a null pointer and Brett the Hitman Heart will come out and put you into the sharpshooter. So that is a crash. That is a hundred car pileup right there. This code is guaranteed to fail. This code is guaranteed crash. Okay. And so he's saying null points at blah. <laughs> And so he's trying to set tail's next pointer to be null. So what was supposed to happen was tail would be here and tail's next should be set to null. And that would have been fine, honestly. So if he had just fixed his for loop, uh, most of this would work except um, this bit about copying copying the pointer. That point that part should have been like up here somewhere. So he, he should have had the temp pointer. Oops. He should have had the temp pointer duplicated tail before tail moves <laughs> right so temp temp pointer equals tail pointer that code should have been before oh no he did yeah, no, he did okay yeah so that's good so that's actually fine so his code his code was mostly erroneous we're getting a lot of ink on the screen here uh i hit keep no oh, uh damn it oh uh so his code here was mostly erroneous due to the for loop. Uh, but also head doesn't appear anywhere on here. So we need to put in a line of code for head. Um, that's correct, that's correct. Return data is correct, yeah. So really the, the main problem here was his for loop was going one too far instead of one short, like it was supposed to do. And his code was missing head, right? So if, um, if size is zero, head equals null, right? Something like that. So he, need, he needs a little check right at the very end of the function, and then his code would be okay. So that's, uh, yeah, and, that, and that's the fun experience you get to have when you're a TA, right? Um, in general, though, if you find your code being uh, very long and verbose, there's usually, usually something wrong with it. Okay. Save, discard ink annotations. Don't save. And again, this isn't to make fun of his code. It's like, it's literally like, this is a mental process you need to get into. Is like, first of all, look at it, see if the invariants are being set properly. You know, tail pointer is never being set to null, right? That's a problem. So if size is zero, if you if you have popped the last element off the list, you need to set head to zero or head to null and tail to null. Okay. So that that's just a habit of mine. You you need to get into. So uh, my code handles, like if you have different sizes, if list size is zero, it'll return zero. If list size is one, then it's gonna set head to null and tail to null and delete the last element. Um, otherwise, you know. And so there's a lot of different ways you can structure your code, but basically you have to make sure that 
all four of the invariants are being handled in the function. Okay. And doubly linked lists. Yeah. So. So that that is our lecture for today. Uh, any questions about it? Any questions about EU four? Your brain is fried. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Just you just work with it. The the only way you can fail is to give up. You know, like like I said, my student he uh, came to my office or several times actually, and we fixed more bad code every time, and every time he learned a little bit. Um, and yeah. Um, and after the semester was over, he went back and rewrote it again another time, and his code looked really good by the end of it. How do you use wget uh, to download a file? Uh, did I close out a putty? Uh, you just type wget in the in the URL to download. All right. So wget uh, www.google.com. It downloads them. Oh, it didn't download. Error. Too many requests. It's <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, you just basically use wget. Wget, and you pass, you paste the URL, and, and it'll download it. You want to share your l.h? I would just use Discord. Um, there, there's a tool called. Um, there's a tool called WinSCP. When SCP um, allows you to log into the server using the same credentials, same username, same password, hit login, and then uh, and then you can just drag files back and forth between them. That's the easy way of doing it. Um, you can also use uh, Cloud Nine. You can use Code Anywhere. Um, code Anywhere allows live code sharing, and so if you use Code Anywhere, you can both connect and be in the uh, Vim screen at the same time. You can edit them together. It's nice. Um, when SCP to download the file, then you can just send it to them on Discord if you want. How do you read and type pseudocode? Um, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> uh, books and documentation use pseudocode because they want to be kind of uh, programming language neutral. You know, in the in here we only teach C plus plus. So I just post all my examples in C plus plus, but they they typically sort sort of invent sort of a quasi non programming language specific, you know, syntax that ne nevertheless kind of resembles whatever language they typically use. Are slides available online? Yeah, they're all on uh, they're all on Canvas. Is that a command line in Unix? Yeah, wget is a command line in Unix. So if you have if you have a URL for a file, then you just wget the URL and it downloads it. It may not be installed on your system. You might need to install it, but it should be. It's pretty common. You may not CC. What does it mean to keep write code to keep deleting provinces until you fail to delete with remaining diplo points? So with uh, the diplomacy points, the only difference between it and the military invasion, the military invasion, if you, if you say invade with 10,000 soldiers, it looks at the first province in the list, and if the number of soldiers it requires is required to invade is less than 10,000, you delete it. If it's more than 10,000, you go on to the next one. And you keep going on to the next one, going on to the next one, until you find a province below 10,000 soldiers, less than or equal. With Diplo, and, and then it stops. With Diplo, you keep going. So if you have uh, three provinces that are each uh, 3,000 cost and you've got $7,000, uh, 7,000 diplomacy points that you go through, 3,000 is less than 7,000, delete it, we got 4,000 remaining. Go on to the next one. 3,000 is less than 4,000, delete it, we got 1,000 remaining. 1,000 is less than 3,000, and we're done. And so with the, with the Diplo Annex, you go through the list and you delete everything and your counter your, your your diplo points remaining goes down and down and down until you reach the end of the list so you scan through the whole list and you can you can annex multiple provinces with one annex command whereas with um invasion you just conquer one province you conquer the first province you come across that has um a soldier cost below that of how many soldiers you have 
uh, when SCP is F SFTP, more or less, yeah. SFTP. Or you can just use SCP. You can uh, SCP files between different Unix systems. You can SCP files between different uh, users if you have their password, which I don't necessarily recommend. Okay. Uh, does that answer your question, um, uh, Emma? Okay. Yeah. So the the only difference is with invasion, you stop after you delete the first one. With annex, you just keep going until you've 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 either run out of points or um, you've hit the end of the list. So it's very similar. It's very similar. The only difference, almost identical code. The only difference is whether or not you break, right? Like, uh, uh, right, whether or not you break after doing delete or not. That's, that's really it. it. In that case, you'd want you'd want size to be. So it is due on Wednesday. Um, with all the example code I've given you guys, um, it should be it should be doable. Um, make sure you pass the testers for the node class and the list class. Um, if you don't have those passing, then you know contact me on Discord and I, I can help you. Okay. And then the actual the actual game code is really short. So that is it for today, guys. Will there be an input tester? Uh, isn't there? Yeah, there's an input tester. But the, the 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 thing itself comes with an input tester, right? Or not even an input tester, it comes with a class tester that will exercise your class and make sure all the functions are working. So you got you got extra support on this one. Thanks, you guys. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions, ask me on Discord. Okay. Peace out.